Good morning, good morning, all my AP1s. Um, I hope that this message finds you all well and enjoying your Friday and Corona free. Um, so this is for your next week's lab. We're going to be covering muscles. So in your lab books, you will need to read pages 52 through, hold on, let me look, 55, okay? Um, on page 56, where it's asking you to draw those muscle tissues, you drew those in the tissue lab. Um, so you can refer back to those ones that you've already drawn, or um, if you have your flashcards, you can go to your tissue flashcards and um, find your three types of muscle tissue in those flashcards, the skeletal, the cardiac, and the smooth, okay? Um, and then on page 56, make sure you get those two questions down there at the bottom. Um, you've got some more questions on page 57. And then you're going to read page 58. Look through the charts on 59 and 60. And then on page 61, you've got some skeletal muscle labeling. Um, 62, more labeling. Again on 64, more labeling. And 65, you've got some questions. Stop. When you get to page 66, the nervous tissue lab, um, that's a, a different lab, so don't do it yet, okay? Just um, the muscle physiology and the muscle anatomy, okay? So, um, I uploaded some notes for you guys. Hopefully, y'all have seen those, and you've seen the muscle review packet. The muscle review packet, um, if you print that off, and fill those out then it will get you three bonus points on your final practical um, the muscle notes go with this week's lab um, what I'm fixing to go over right now so if you pulled those up and printed those off um, and you have those handy while you're watching this it will help you out so um, the main thing that I want to talk to you guys about today for this particular lab is muscle contraction. Okay, so hopefully, like I said, you've got those notes that I uploaded for you guys, and I have my little portable whiteboard here. Okay, so specifically looking at muscle contraction, I'm trying to move this where you can see it. There we go. So, specifically talking about muscle contraction, okay, a few things that you guys need to know. First of all, the primary neurotransmitter that we're dealing with here is acetylcholine, okay? And our two primary proteins that we're dealing with in muscle contraction are actin and myosin. Actin is the thin filament, myosin is the thick filament. So right here, this, wait, this little drawing right here, boop, myosin is the thick and then the two actin are the thin, okay? <clears throat> Um, and then the primary mineral for muscle contraction is calcium. So let me explain how muscle contraction works. Y'all are going to get this from Dr. Nelson as well um, when y'all cover muscles with him. Um, so hopefully between he and I both, you guys will end up with a pretty good understanding of how this works. Okay? So still trying to figure out my camera here. Bear with me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, muscle contraction. All right. The nerve impulse is going to reach the bottom of this axon terminal. Wrong hand, Ida. Up here. Okay. And when the nerve impulse reaches the end of that terminal, then acetylcholine gets released into this space in between the end of the axon and the muscle fiber. Okay. Um, this space in here is called the synaptic cleft or the neuromuscular junction, okay? Um, so acetylcholine gets released by these synaptic ves uh, vessels, okay? And um, it binds to receptors on the muscle fiber, okay? And on these receptors, they're linked to the T-tubules in the muscle. Okay, so the T-tubules are going to release their stored calcium into the muscle fiber, into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, okay? Calcium is going to go all through the muscle and it's going to bind to these two little protective um, 
things that are covering the actin, okay? These two little protective proteins. Um, troponin and tropomycin, okay? Calcium is going to bind to the troponin. And once it binds to the troponin, the troponin shifts, allowing the tropomycin to shift. And that exposes the actin filament, okay? And then these myosin grabby heads can grab onto the actin filament and pull. Okay, so one more time in plain English. <laughs> All right, inside the muscle fiber, you've got these two proteins. You've got the thick protein of myosin, and you've got the thin proteins of actin. Now, the actin is protected by troponin and tropomyosin. Okay, so the myosin heads can't get to the actin all the time. All right, so when we decide to, say, flex our bicep, okay, um, that nerve impulse travels from our brain down to the neurons um, in the bicep, right? And those neurons release acetylcholine um, into that muscle, into that synaptic, synaptic cleft for that muscle. That acetylcholine goes to our T-tubules throughout the muscles and causes them to release their stored calcium. So the T-tubules release the calcium, the calcium floods into the muscle, and what it does is it causes Tropon it binds to troponin, and um, once troponin is bound up, then the tropomyosin can slide out of the way and expose the actin. When the actin's exposed, then the myosin heads can grab and pull. And the more myosin heads that we have involved, the stronger the muscle contraction is. Okay? So that is muscle contraction kind of in a nutshell for you guys. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go over with y'all is the three different types of muscle, okay? You've got skeletal muscle, which is specifically what you're looking at as far as the labeling. Um, you've got smooth muscle, and you've got cardiac muscle. And each of these three muscle types has distinguishing characteristics, okay? And again, I laid those out for you guys in the notes down here at the bottom, okay? Skeletal muscle is that that's attached to bone, okay? It's for body movement. It is voluntary. The muscle fibers are striated and it's multinucleate, okay? Smooth muscle, the next one on our list right here, we would find this in places like the digestive tract, um, our blood vessels, um, kind of lining those hollow organs, um, Smooth muscle is involuntary, and it has, it's kind of got a long, kind of stringy appearance to it, and it has a large central nucleus, okay? And then last but not least is cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. It is involuntary, um, and it has this branched appearance to it. Um, and this branched appearance gives rise to these intercalated discs, okay? Um... And when you're looking at the cardiac muscle microscopically, you see these kind of dark bands ever so often through that muscle fiber. Um, those dark bands are the intercalated discs. So, hopefully that covers muscle contraction for you guys and gives you what you need to know for this particular lab. Um, once you have completed all the questions and labeling in your lab book, please snap pictures of those and either text them to me or email them to me so that I know you've gotten those completed. And if you chose to do the pre-lab, then snap a picture of that and email or text it to me as well. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, you need any help, anything like that, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, you guys have several different ways to contact me, um, and I'm available for you if you need anything, okay? So you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.